Welcome to Guns and Gear Network, everyone. Appreciate you tuning in. Today we're going to take a look at the Baofeng AR-152. Stay tuned. Welcome back guys, appreciate you tuning in. So today we're going to take a look at the Barry Fang AR-152 radio. Follow my channel, you know I've done numerous videos about radios, a lot of Bayo Fangs. Uh, decided to do one on this one, kind of new to market, been around about a year. Um, you know, the price point I was kind of like, eh, I don't know. I'd, I'd seen some reviews, but I decided to get one in just to see what it was about. So they have different price points ranging from about $75 just for the basic radio up to about $150 depending on the package you get with the accessories. I opted for kind of middle of the road. The, this price point was about $100 uh, right in there. It's all going to be in my Amazon store. I have a communications section. You can go right over there and find this and other packages and other radios uh, that I've reviewed or recommend. So. Here's what came in my package, is the radio itself, um, uh, a case, a charging cable, a programming cable, a rubber duck style antenna, and then this tape tactical style uh, antenna here. Uh, that's what came with the package. Obviously going to get a user manual, which I did. Here's the box that it came in. So what is the AR-152? Well, the AR part is, I think, stands for Amateur Radio-152 which it is kind to it is kind of look trying to get the look of a military radio more commonly known as like a prick 152 radio which is made by harris so this one's kind of got that look in in a few ways but it is not anything to do with the prc or prick 152 radio um it does have a similar look or concept to it but that's about it um and i'll discuss some of the differences between the two radios as we go through this video here so um the case we'll go ahead and show you that real quick i'll show you a few of the accessories Fits in here nice. This right here is nice construction. It uh, doesn't feel cheap or anything. It actually feels pretty decent quality, to be honest with you. I kind of wish they had used Velcro here instead of a Fastec buckle. Uh, Fastec buckles can break, can and do break. Um, Velcro it can wear out eventually over time, but it's not going to break. So I prefer uh, Velcro there, to be honest with you, but that's okay. Uh, set that off to the side. Charging cable, unlike the UV5R or the 888S or one of those other type radios that has a charging cradle, this one actually, you just plug it in right here, plug this into the wall, and it charges. So I added this here because I don't want to throw this in a drawer in my communications box and not know what it goes to, so I labeled it with an AR-152 label there. That doesn't come on it. Set that off to the side. Programming cable, and then the rubber duck. If this is actually nice quality, and according to some other reviewers, this actually does pretty decent. Uh, this tape style, tactical, this little Velcro keeper does come on it. We'll go ahead and show you all that. It extends out like that. You can use a relocation cable uh, if you so choose, if you're going to mount this with a plate carrier and then mount the cable, or the, I'm sorry, mount the antenna on your back. Uh, so this works. Uh, all the fittings are basically the same as any of your other um, Baofang UV5R type radios. User manual. This BFF-F8HP did not come on here. I added that. So we'll talk about that here in a second. Um, comes in this little cardboard box. So, this programming uh, information in here, a lot of different stuff, uh, gives you all the basics. I've had this radio for about a week, been using it um, pretty much the whole week, off and on, mostly to monitor emergency services here in my area. Uh, we've ever, like a lot of people, we've had this cold front come through, so we've had a lot of emergencies and stuff like that. Battery life on this thing is crazy long. So when I first got it, I didn't charge it up. I just looked at the battery indicator, which is right here in this right-hand corner, and it was showed fully charged. I didn't charge it, and I've been using this off and on for a week, and it's down to only two bars. So it only lost one bar in that time, and I actually left this thing on, on all night a couple times by accident. I didn't even mean to do that. And about 4 or 5 in the morning, this thing went off uh, with an emergency call, and I forgot I had left it on. So... 
If you want a battery, uh, a radio with a long, long battery life, this right here uh, is a radio to get. Uh, so far, this thing has lasted a long time. So in comparison in size, so this is the AR-152, the UV-5R, and the AAA-S. Now, the, my, in fairness, my UV-5R does have a battery extension on it. So it's, it's a little bigger. It's normally about this size if you're just using the standard UV-5R. So it is a big radio, no belt clip on the back. So that's why you need a case of some sort to keep it in, okay? So programming and stuff is very similar. Uh, one of the controversies about this thing was you it will not program under using the UV5R dropdown. That's why I put this here. The BFF-F8HP is the actual radio that it programs with uh, in Chirp software. However, I was able to clone from this radio to this radio. And the way I did that was I took the information out of this radio, downloaded it into Chirp, saved it, change my drop down to this BFF part as far as the radio selected and then I took that information and put it back into this radio and got no default. It would actually program using the UV5R drop down but in the end it gave a default even though it did show the correct programming in the radio itself it did show a default but with the new drop down of change to this, uh, selecting that radio, it did not show a default, so it programmed it out correctly. I assume there was a few things that wasn't uh, in sync or something, so that's why it showed that default. So just keep that in mind uh, if you're gonna do it. Similar functions, the nice uh, digital readout here is pretty big, which I like, unlike the UV5R, that is a little small. <coughs> Excuse me guys, I'm gonna grab me a little bit of water. All right, so two channels. Again, if you're familiar with the UV5R, same thing. I do a keypad lockout here on all my radios. So I'll unlock it real quick. Lock. Unlock. We'll go ahead and move this up. So unlike the AB button here to change from channel, this one is the exit button. So I'm over here in GMRS. We're going to turn this one on real quick. Channel mode. AR-152 to UV-5R testing. AR-152 to UV-5R testing. Do the same thing over here. UV-5R to AR-152 testing. UV-5R to AR-152 testing. So, see it works. Those Lock. are G that's GMR GMRS channels. There's that. Go ahead and move this back. Unlock move that back down to that uh, fire station monitoring <coughs> again similar function so <coughs> am radio. i'm sorry fm radio button here flashlight button with strobe mode I'm not a real fan of that but it does have it again no belt clip on the back it does have a lanyard loop uh, right there to take the battery off you push here pull this down um, this battery is huge and it definitely lasts a long time the radio itself is pretty small just like that channel mode comes back on <coughs> all right so for accessories um, you may Lock. be wanting to know will it work with UV5R accessories yes so if you have any of this type stuff um, handsets um, uh, the little earphones anything like that same thing if you look right here pull that down it's right here it's that style right there all right for you military radio guys you'll also notice they've even mimicked the Thales Harris uh, microphone which is what it looks like similar in, in design it's got a volume button right here, just like the Thales uh, Harris one does right there. Push to talk is right here. does have a lapel or a clip. <coughs> emergency button right there. Not going to push the emergency button. It sends off all kinds of crazy signals and beeps and stuff. Um, the, the microphone on this thing actually sounds pretty good. I'm sorry, the speaker. Uh, sounds pretty good. It's actually got a little bit of bass to it, so it's not as quite as tinny sounding as the UV5R and the smaller radio. So it actually sounds pretty good, actually. But um, if you're looking for a tactical style radio, 
maybe you mill sim guys, airsoft guys, preppers, anything like that. This right here kind of fit a little better look in my opinion. Um, again, has nothing to do with the PRC 152 radio, but it is in a similar look. Ironically, the PRC 152 radio, if you think this is a big radio, the PRC 152 is actually bigger than this. Probably stands up about that much taller, maybe a little bit wider. This is an all plastic chassis radio, whereas the PRC 152 is a aluminum chassis. But anyway, just thought I would share the PR, I mean, I'm sorry, the, the PRC, the uh, AR-152 radio um, in similar in concept with PRC-152, but has nothing in common with it other than similarity in look. But anyway, two thumbs up for me. I thought it was a pretty good radio, and I uh, highly recommend it if you are looking for something like this um, for your preps. All right, guys, so if you're looking for a nice radio, I would recommend this one. This right here, I think, uh, would fit a certain type of uh, what people are looking for. If you've got any experience with the uh, AR-152 radio, be sure to share that with us. That would be greatly appreciated. And as always, guys, like, share, and subscribe. Bring another video shortly. Have a great day.